Welcome to Max ECU Training Part 50. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our variable valve timing feature in programming within our M-Tune software. Our variable valve timing is going to allow us to control a variable cam solenoid to allow the camshaft to rotate to a particular cam target to change the dynamic overlap of our engine. Dynamic overlap will allow more or less cylinder filling of our engine at various engine speeds. We're going to be taking a look at how to set up the control solenoid and all of the closed loop PID control. We're also going to be taking a look at how to deal with integrating our actual target table into our fuel and ignition timing calculations and some examples towards the end of the training tutorial. We have a lot to learn. Let's jump into this video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with programming our variable valve timing within our MAX ECU. Our variable valve timing is gonna allow us to control the dynamic movement or the overlap in our camshaft as the engine's going through the auto cycle. Now, typically with an engine that doesn't have variable valve timing, we're gonna find that the cam gears are fixed. They're not gonna move and our overlap is fixed in the camshaft design. Now, we can put adjustable cam gears on and start to move the camshafts around as far as uh, the timing goes or valve timing. We'll find that we can shift our power band up or down a bit, but we're not gonna have this dynamic ability where we can control things on the fly. Most modern engines have some sort of variable valve timing that are fitted to them, something like a Honda K-Series engine or a 2JZ VVTi engine. Both have variable valve timing on the intake camshaft. It's gonna allow us to broaden up our torque band, have less pumping losses as we're driving around part throttle situations, which will improve our fuel economy and our throttle response. So variable valve timing is going to be very, very ideal for making power, we'll have a broader power band, it will make make our engine more efficient and ultimately make our vehicle faster. So we definitely want to go and use this if it's fitted to the engine from the OEM manufacturer. We're not going to be able to retrofit a variable valve timing type of feature to an engine that doesn't have it. So we'll find that if your engine's something older, maybe a Honda B series or a Honda D series engine, uh, you may be finding you have an older 2JZ engine. They don't have variable valve timing. We're not going to fit it to the engine. So in that case, we'll just deal with cam gears and the normal tuning procedure associated with those. But any engine that's fitted with a variable valve timing feature, we definitely want to take advantage of using it because it will be to our advantage. So what I want to do here in the beginning of this video is actually take a look at the setup and configuration details for variable valve timing. We're going to go through just a generic example and setup here, uh, assuming that we're dealing with an engine that's just fitted to the intake cam. Uh, you may have engines that are both intake and exhaust cam or an engine that's just on the exhaust. Typically, most variable valve timing engines do have that fitted just to the intake cam, but you might find a combination of any of these. We're going to go through of how to set it up, what are the details we need to look for, and how to program those in our MAX ECU associated with what we're trying to control. Um, we will take a look at some more plug and play examples towards the end of the video for a Honda K series and a 2JZ VVTi engine. Those are very, very common engines you'll run into in calibrating and tuning with your MAX that you may need to uh, just know the details and some of the basic information in order to have successful calibration with those particular uh, programming details, the variable valve timing. But first, let's focus on setting up and taking a look at here and more of a generic universal approach for variable valve timing, what we need to know, what we need to do. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is set up our output to control the solenoid, which is gonna be for the variable valve timing control. Now the solenoid is gonna be essentially acting as a bypass. When the solenoid's closed, we'll have no oil flowing through the solenoid, which won't make its way up into the variable valve timing cam gear to rotate the cam and actually change that overlap. Once we start to let oil flow through the cam gear, it will start to rotate the camshaft in relation to how much oil pressure and oil flow is allowed to go through and into the cam gear. So how much we're allowing to bypass essentially through the, the, the solenoid is dedicated for the variable valve timing. So when we're controlling it and working within our max, we're essentially programming the amount of oil flow into that cam gear to allow it to either rotate more or less. But we need to go and set up this control solenoid first. Let's take a look at how to do that. It's very, very easy. We're gonna go in here into our start and to our navigation on the left. We're gonna move down here into outputs. Now in outputs, we'll go to output config. Now at this point in time, if we take a look at our features here, we don't find that the VVT feature or variable valve timing feature is an option that we can even take a look at. We have to first define the output for the control solenoid for this to appear to start to edit it. All right, so what we're gonna do is go into output config. Now I'm going to assume that the variable valve timing solenoid that I'm working with is gonna be a low side pulse width modulated trigger type of solenoid. So we'll have a low side and a high side. We've talked about this a lot in the training course. Low side is going to be, it's gonna ground pulse the solenoid in a pulse width modulated format 
in a zero to 100% duty cycle scale. If we're dealing with a high side output, we can use our high sides down here. These are GPO 15 and 16 in this particular case with my race max ECU. We'll find that's gonna be sending a pulse width modulated 12 volt signal to the solenoid. So in the case of the high side, one wire for the variable valve timing solenoid will be going to a um, power source and then the other will go wired in here to our GPO low side output and we'll be pulsing it to be able to control it. Um, likewise, kind of the opposite effect here, if we're dealing with our high side output, if the solenoid's high side trigger or 12 volt trigger and pulsed in that format, we'll find that the one wire would have to go to some form of a ground, chassis ground, or some ground within the engine harness. And then the other wire will go in here to the GPO output for the 12 volt out. Um, we'll find that that's gonna be sufficient to drive the solenoid directly from the max ECU. We're not gonna be pulling more than an amp on the solenoid, so we don't need to relay it, just for reference sake. I'm gonna assume in most cases, We'll find that most solenoids are going to be low side triggered. So I'm going to assume that I'm using my GPO output three here. So I've wired my pulse width modulated output to my variable valve timing solenoid in this particular format right here. So I'm going to go to select and at the top here, I'm going to type in VVT and we're going to look down our list. This is everything associated with VVT functionality for an output control. Now what we're interested in here is a VVT intake cam one advanced slash single solenoid. So in this case, I have one solenoid on this universal theoretical generic engine we're gonna be setting up here, and that's gonna be controlling my intake cam for the oil. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.